Welcome to 3D Printing Industry News, brought to you by 3D Systems. Hi, this is Tyler Bester here at Inside 3D Printing Santa Clara, and I'm here with the winner of the startup competition, Shamil Hargovin, with uh, Weave Wearables. And uh, what's particularly interesting about Shamil is that he actually met his co-founder uh, at the first conference, right? The yes. one in New York. Want to That's tell right. us how that came about? Yeah, 2012, New York, uh, the Javits Center, I think it was, and... Yeah, LV, uh, LV is my co-founder. We met we met on the floor there. Uh, we actually found that we had some things in common. We went to the same college, and from there we stayed in touch. And now we're starting Weave Wearables. No kidding. <laughs> and uh, have you been to any of the conferences since then? Uh, I have not. LV has, and it's, I'm glad to be back at Santa Clara. Well, look at that. You've gone from your first conference as an attendee <laughs> to your second as a winner of the startup competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's just great. I mean, I love, I love how much it's grown, and... I love that uh, every time I come back, there's like at least another half a dozen to a dozen people I walk away with wanting to work with. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> no kidding. And so tell me a little bit about what you got in your hand here. What exactly is Weave? Yeah, so uh, we call ourselves Weave Wearables Company. Uh, our first product is a 3D printed custom orthotic. Uh, wow. Essentially, we we're able to take a scan of your foot and from that, using our own customization engine, uh, get you something that's really customized to you. Hmm. Uh, where we want to go with this is we're adding sensors and so we're going to learn your body over time and you know we're able then to prescribe sort of this better orthotic for you over time for athletic mm -hmm. use everyday use for comfort whatever that whatever your use case is can i take a look at that yeah please what's remarkable about this is that this is uh this is all nylon right correct nylon 12. and yet here it's so flexible and you've got a little bit of padding and cushioning here yeah. how do you go about kind of figuring out um how much flexibility or tension that sure. I, I need versus someone else? Yeah, that's a fair question. So, I mean, one of the things we realize that everyone is different, uh, we played around with a lot of this and realized that based on weight, based on size of your surface area you're mm -hmm. taking up with your feet, we do need to offer a certain difference in thickness and things mm -hmm. of that nature. We also kind of innovated when it came to, you just pointed this out, see how this sort of squishes in a little yeah. bit? Well, that's essentially because, you know, we're able to get the same one material but different effects with that material. And we thought that was really cool is you can get that one piece, but it's all in how you design the file rather than trying to add a whole bunch of materials. And that was very exciting for us. And you mentioned wearables, which is yeah. pretty interesting. So we know about wearables from like the Jawbone, Fitbit, yeah. and yeah. some of these other devices. Yeah. Why do I want a wearable in my shoe sole? Yeah, so that's, I think that's really what got us excited, right? So the Fitbit, it it's some data. It's not always accurate. Uh, it's not necessarily functional. Right, so what this is, it's functional. It's you have an actual need, as in I have back pain or foot pain, and then on top of that, it's it's well, it's not always in your face. It's hidden, which is actually something people like. Uh, and then, and the third part would really be, you know, it's able to then learn you over time and really get that accurate level of data. So our belief ultimately is, uh, you get uh, wearable is effective when it's custom. Mm -hmm. 3D printing helps us make it custom. And if you want to specifically get a wearable for a particular part of the body, then focus on the wearable being in that part of the body. Mm. It's a little bit far-fetched, we think, to say that a Fitbit could calculate all the things about your body. I think we're saying we'll be more targeted. And I understand that you're raising an investment round right now. For the investors that might be out there, <laughs> uh, what's the business model and where are you currently in raising raising yeah. money? Yeah, totally. So we, we've obviously bootstrapped. Uh, both LV and I put our own money in initially to prove this out. We're selling this in through podiatrists and physiotherapists, but our goal is to become a direct-to-consumer play. And we intend to do that with our sensors. Uh, and you know, from there, there's a, we've got a whole series of other ideas of where we can go with the brand, uh, you know, athletic, health, uh, comfort, or fashion. So uh, yeah, I'd say it's a really good time because we've proven out some, a core part of business and we know how to build that. And so it's just what's next. And yeah, we, we're looking for money for that, of course. <laughs> and my final question is, yeah. uh, when can I get myself a pair of these to run with? <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling you'd ask that. I'm going to have to take a scan of your foot at some point today while we're here on the conference floor, and I'll make sure we get you a pair, Tyler. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Emil. Hey, thank you. Cheers. Thanks for watching 3D Printing Industry News TV, brought to you by 3D Systems.